Hello viewers, we're gonna talk about the high rate of divorce in our community today. Divorce is something which wasn't familiar to the average, I would say Cameroonian, um, growing up, say in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and maybe the early 2000s. As time has gone by, things have kind of changed and the rate of divorce has definitely gone up some in our community. Sometimes I wonder about um, the reason why that is. Um, most of us Cameroonians, I'll speak for Cameroonians, it might be Africans in general, but I think even in the US, the rate of divorce has definitely um, gone up some. And sometimes I wonder um, why that um, seems to be the trend. In many conversations, as I speak with people um, at work, friends out of work, Cameroonians, Africans, African Americans, and Americans overall, we, um, I always tell people that I did not know one divorced family growing up. Um, truthfully, it was just not something that I personally experienced um, as a child, a teenager, or as a young adult. Times have certainly changed, and um, I guess marriage has a new, a whole new meaning, um, or maybe marriage has just changed. That institution, I don't believe, is the same like it used to be when we were much younger. Um, sometimes I think the reason, and there are certainly many reasons for divorce, and every case is different. Um, every couple has different circumstances. So um, I am aware of the fact that we can't generalize the reasons why, but I think some factors that have affected um, family stability and divorce in our community are number one, I believe women are more educated. As a, as a result of them being educated, I think women now have a means of supporting themselves and taking care of their children. And so if a person um, or a woman is in a situation where they're unhappy, or maybe their relationship is toxic, or maybe they have had issues which, just, um, which have not been dealt with for whatever reason, they now have a choice to leave if they want to. When I was growing up, I know a lot of families um, were supported by fathers predominantly. Most fathers, um, I believe, made more money. A lot of mothers were stay-at-home moms, and um, some worked, but I don't think that they made as much as their husbands did. So it kind of put them in a position where even if they weren't happy, they kind of stayed of course, if we ever have, or I ever have the opportunity to interview some of these women, um, I'm sure they'll have the, a story to tell. Um, based on the um, Cameroonian culture, um, where a dower is paid for a woman, and she leaves her family pretty much to go join another family, um, sometimes that dowry, if the woman is from a poor background and the family is not able to pay back that money, I found that women got stuck in very toxic situations, in very abusive relationships, in relationships where they weren't happy, um, in relationships where they weren't treated as an equal, but they stuck in those marriages and relationships just because. I think that dowry thing is the main reason. If, if the family had taken the dowry and couldn't pay back to the husband, then that woman was stuck in a situation where she really didn't want to be in. Plus, if the woman was not educated and did not have a career of her own or have a job or way of um, making money to sustain herself, then that's another situation where a person would be stuck in a marriage where they're unhappy and they can't move forward just because they can't support themselves financially. So if a dowry gets paid to a poor family, and um, the, the wife or the woman from that family 
is I'm running back home and complaining about things the husband is doing. And it, it could range from, you know, alcoholism to him being a drunk, um, to him being verbally abusive. It could range from things like him being physically abusive um, and multiple other things and maybe not even taking care of the family financially, even though, even though they have the ability to do that. So um, if people find themselves in these situations um, where they don't have a whole lot, where their families don't have the financial capability to pay back that diary, then they just stayed. In miserable situations, I strongly believe that a lot of women um, got sick from the stress that they encountered or experienced in their marriages and eventually died. Some probably died young. Many of them were, were emotionally traumatized. Many of them, of course, subordinated as our culture um, almost promotes. Um, if you're African, specifically from Cameroon, I believe because I lived it, I believe that women are, are treated like second class citizens. Um, women are placed in a position where they feel like they have to answer to a man. Even just having a daughter is not as prestigious to an African man as it is having um, a son. So most women go into marriages hoping and praying that they have a son to carry the family name forward. And sometimes if they don't, they're treated very unfairly by the in-laws. And, and they put so much pressure on them and, and treat them like less than because they cannot have a male child. Just so you know, it is not the woman who makes the Y chromosome. It is the man. So if a woman is having children and all the children are, are female, it is no fault of hers. But our, our community, um, our society, has all this um, myths, I'll call it a myth because they're not reality. And a lot of people um, have blamed women for things which weren't within their control. Um, obviously as time has gone on, things have changed. Um, there's been a lot of evolution. Um, women have made so much progress in our community um, that they don't have to settle. Women don't have to stay in relationships where they do not feel fulfilled. Um, they don't have to stay stuck in relationships where they have no power, where they have no say, where they cannot control the environment they're in. Um, and so I really want to encourage every woman listening to this um, video to make sure that they have something they're doing for themselves to make money and generate an income so they can take care of themselves. In today's society, I find that a lot of households have been supported by women. Um, roles have kind of changed a little bit. Um, men are responsible, some men are responsible, but some have lost themselves or have lost touch with the role that they need to play. Um, so imagine yourself in a situation where um, you have a spouse and you have expectations of the spouse and the spouse is not delivering after multiple conversations, um, the tendency today is that if you have talked and complained and carried on and nagged as they would call it, and the person you're with doesn't wanna change their ways or doesn't wanna put you first or the relationship first or your children first, then as a woman who is able to care for herself financially you have the option of living that situation. I think it's a win for women. I am not, um, I am not for divorce. I am a strong believer in staying and working things out, but both parties have to be engaged and both parties have to want the relationship to survive. And both parties have to value the relationship in a way that makes, that motivates them to take the necessary steps to keep the relationship going. So I am a great advocate for therapy, which is another thing 
that is not very common in our community. A lot of people don't seek therapy. A lot of people don't want to bring in a third party into their relationships. Even though there's thirds and fourths and fifths and tenths and many more parties in that relationship, people who know your issues and your problems and so I don't know why there's so much resistance um, to going to therapy and seeking professional help. I'm gonna go back to how things were when I grew up. When I grew up too, I don't think I ever remembered any couple that was going through therapy. I was surrounded by a lot of families and a lot of couples who I believe were in unhappy situations, but I don't think anyone ever sought um, therapy. For us, I think if you had a problem, you went to your family, you told your family what was going on, and then they held a meeting. And of course, sometimes these meetings were the family members, based on which side of the party they were, were biased. So if, if you um, have a problem with your husband and you go complain to maybe your family or maybe his side of the family and they decide to hold a meeting, there's, there, there was no guarantee that the tool, that the, the advice that was going to be given or the solutions that were going to be provided were the right solutions for you. Certainly it helped um, in some cases. Of course, some people are objective, so it's not every single situation um, that the problem could not be resolved. But I think going to a therapist, um of family counseling and seeking the right tools and the right strategies to mend the problems in a marriage is really important um life has certainly changed life has changed a lot in the past decade or two i hope that um a lot of couples if you're still married and you're facing difficulties in your marriage I pray that you will try to find solutions um, that will lead you in the right direction in order for your families to stay together. Granted, I think both parties have to be engaged. Both parties have to want not necessarily the same thing, but I also think it is important for couples to have personal goals, but certainly also have common goals and and have things that they have values and things that they're both committed to because if you're not committed to the same things life starts to stay you in different directions and then people um certainly don't feel the same way about each other because they just are not interested in the same things so if you're going through a difficult marriage you can certainly talk to friends but I read recently that by year two, if you're having marital, um, marital issues and you've talked and you've um, had friends advise you, you've maybe had families advise you and the status quo is not changing, then at that point you need to seek professional um, counseling. Because a lot of times people let too much time go by and then the problems just become overwhelming to the point where maybe they can't handle it anymore. And as a result of that, um, the marriages fail. So um, let's just all stay focused on the reason why we get married and take ourselves back to the reason why you pick the person you're with, even though over time, people certainly change. I don't think any one person is the same person that they were say 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or 20 years ago. Um, we're constantly changing and constantly evolving. We're constantly growing as a people. So I think it is unfair to, and a lot of people throw it in other people's faces. It's unfair to tell a person that, oh, you have changed and you are not the same person that I met years and years ago. Obviously, um, people change and they're not going to be the exact same person. Um, we're all changing in different ways. And I think those changes come from um, maybe life experiences. Whatever you go through certainly changes you. But I believe that if you're committed to working things out, and I, when I say you, I mean both parties, 
um, things will get better. People must have um, the ability to express themselves and know and let their partners know what they're thinking. Let their partners know um, what goals they have for themselves. Um, try to go on dates with your, with your, um, with your spouse or your, um, if you're in a relationship, try to go on, on, on dates with that person. Um, maybe, you know, a couple of times a month, just so you can have some one-on-one -on -one time and discuss issues that are important to you because a lot of things get in the way for some couples, they're raising children, for some, they're taking care of their, um, aging parents. For some, their jobs are so demanding that they really do not have time to touch base with their partners and partners, um, husbands, wives, to check in with them frequently enough to see where the state of the union is. So every couple should really be having, every so often, should really sit down, just the two of them, and talk about the state of their union because that changes over time. And I believe with open communication, a lot of these relationships that are falling apart can be fixed, can be rescued. We can keep family units together and raise children in stable environments. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas and some things that, some topics I can touch on or talk about on the show, I am definitely open to it. If you love this video, please hit like, subscribe, and share this message to anybody and everybody you know. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day.